Well, as we look ahead to this afternoon's vote on the Privileges Committee report, many on the backbenches have decried the findings, shouting, stitch up on behalf of the former Prime Minister. Rishi Sunak is staying down the barrel, though, of not three by-elections, but four, because the latest one is David Warburton, who's the MP for Somerton and Froome, who announced at the weekend he's resigning. He's the one who was caught in a sex and cocaine sting involving a newspaper. And, yeah, absolutely. And now stepping down in the wake of the sex and drugs scandal. And I'm absolutely thrilled to say that David joins us in the studio. GB News First, I believe? It is. Exactly. It is. Welcome to Proud the show. To Thank here. you so much for joining us this Thank morning. You. Good to see you. I, well, how, I'm just going to ask the, the typical question. How are you feeling now? I mean, this was in the papers at the weekend. Your name, your family. How are you yeah. feeling? To be honest, uh, a huge sense of relief. Uh, you know, and release at last I can talk about this. This stuff's been going on for a, mm. a year, more than a year, 15 months, and I've not been able to speak out and say a single word against repeated allegations that appear against me. And it's been horrifically difficult keeping that silence and tough for my family too and tough for the people who, who, who know the other side of the story, as it were. But um, so it's, it's great to be to be free and to be able to say what I like. But I'm, only, I'm only one day into it, so that may change. Just that. make it clear, what are the allegations actually against you? Well, I'm not allowed to... Well, I can say it. Oh, right, yeah, you can I say, can say right, it for okay. you. So you were... Uh, took a, 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 You were in your home with a young woman. Uh, there was... Uh, you were... A, a newspaper sting. You were being secretly photographed for a sex and drugs uh, involving cocaine, which, you, of course, you've campaigned about in the Commons. Yeah. So you were being, by your own self-assessment, Idiotic, David. Absolutely, a hundred percent, absolutely idiotic. And I made a, uh, I made a ridiculous decision and a, and a silly mistake. I was, I was led down a pathway. I was, I was caught. I was photographed, deliberately set up, and and I fell for it. I, it, it was naivety and stupidity. There's no question about that. And while you can complain about a sting and being ensnared. Nobody forced you to go into that room with that young woman. Nobody forced exactly. you to stick cocaine up your nose. And nobody forced you to drink copious quantities of that very strong Japanese whiskey. No, they certainly didn't. And I have to say that um, I've been teetotal for the last year and uh, I tend to stay that way because I certainly learned a lesson. But you're right. I, I, I made the decision to do that. And I, you know, I didn't have to say I did it, but I'm... I'm standing up because I want to tell the truth about everything. Your wife, Harriet, has stood by you. Not, men, not all wives would. No, she's been fantastic throughout. Yeah, she has stood by me a hundred percent, and it's been incredibly difficult for her and for my children. It's, it's, it's been a hard time. I mean, initially, when this all um, broke, I um, I couldn't cope with it, and I, I I literally collapsed, and I couldn't hardly walk, and, that, and I went to a psychiatric hospital. Meantime, she had to go into hiding with the kids from the press who were all over the house, and they visited our. Uh, respective parents and my brother and her brother and so on. The, the press were all over the country trying to get hold of me uh, or her. And, uh, and then when she did go back home with the kids, I was still, I was still incarcerated. Um, but she had to sort of black out the windows and the kids weren't allowed to go in the garden because there were photographers everywhere. It was, it was a really difficult time. But, but partly, but if you hadn't gone there in the first place with that woman, that, none of that would have happened. Well, yeah, to, to be honest, though, that, that actually wasn't part of any allegation. That, that's never been investigated, and that was never part of any investigation in Parliament or, or anywhere else. It was other investigations, that, that, that two other investigations that Parliament looked at, one of which was completely dismissed, and the other one which is technically still ongoing. But in order for me to talk about the process of how the ICGS, which is the watchdog, mm. the parliamentary watchdog, how appalling and, and what an in astonishing abuse of power they, they wield over all of us. In order for me to talk about that, I can no longer be an MP because they don't allow you to talk about it even after it's the result comes so out. So what, you weren't allowed to talk and give evidence to the inquiry on your own behalf? No, I can give evidence to the inquiry, but it remains absolutely confidential and I can't speak so up, can't so nobody out. knows. And even after they produce the results, even after you're found not to have done these things, you, you must remain silent about it, not only about it and about the charges and about uh, their decision, but also about the processes of how they came to make their decision. And that's the bit that, that really is galling. For example, they, yeah. for example, I must say that they, they have denied me any witnesses. So, so all my witness evidence, they say, no, nope, we can't look at that. They denied me all... I, I provided more than 4,500 items of, 
of documentary, contemporaneous documentary evidence. They said, no, that doesn't count. We're not looking at that. They, they said themselves that the investigation took more than a year, so it was a fl and it was a flawed investigation. But they say, because they took so long, and because they made such a mess of it, and, and, mess, and, and they, 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 they know it's flawed, they're not going to do it again, because it would take a long time again. So we have to just accept the results of that flawed investigation. And they also said that of my complainants, one of them lied, that they admit one of them lied to the watchdog about going to the press, another one falsified evidence with a, with a fake video, another one falsified um, uh, a document, a reference, and we've got manipulated photos, surreptitious photos, manipulated recordings, you name it. But all of this they cast aside in order to come to the decision that they'd already decided. There have been lots of talk, you know, kangaroo courts and, and witch hunt. They, they mm. seem to be on a daily basis in Parliament now. Is that how you would describe you've been treated? 100%, yeah. Yeah, a baby kangaroo, a wallaby court. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, it, it, it isn't any sort of a judicial process. That's the other thing. They're not allowed... The, there's no place you can go to appeal again. So, you, so, that, so there, there's no judicial oversight of their procedures. Yeah, mm -hmm. They just make the decision. If they make the rules by which they make their decision, then they make their decision and then you've got, you're, you're stuffed. Mm. That's the end of it. And, and you continue as an MP for the last year, but you were not allowed to set foot on the parliamentary estate, which I think is staggering. Uh, it, yeah, it has, I haven't seen my office for, for, for more than a year. So you yeah, have to do it remotely. Be, do it all remotely, that's right. And, and uh, the reason for that is... As soon as it was all over the newspapers, uh, they felt that if I turned up um, in, in Parliament, then people might throw up their hands in horror. So I should... I, should I thought a man away. was innocent until proven guilty. Well, that's exactly, yeah, what you would have thought. And, of course, I don't want to get dragged into Boris Johnson, but his point about the Privileges Committee... Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the sentence from the Privileges Committee was longer than for him allegedly misleading Parliament. They whacked him for an extra 50 days because he had the temerity to criticise the process of the Privileges Committee. Mm. And that is a specific, um, a specific point that they made to me as well, that if I speak out or make criticisms of them publicly, the mother of all then I will pay for that as well. Yeah. So the, my only route out is to resign and, you're going and to say, what, I can say what I like now. And a by-election which the Tories will probably lose, even though you've got a 20,000 majority. Well, uh, Why it, are you it, smiling? It, <laughs> I don't mean to smile. It's going to be tough for them. I mean, I've won three large majorities in a, in a row, but prior to that it was a Lib Dem seat for 18 years, mm. um, over four elections. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult. And the government obviously is facing three other by-elections and all sorts of other woes coming out daily. So it's, it's a tough time for a by-election for them. You had care, men, you had mental, Ill, mental problems. Are they all fixed now? 100%, yeah. I'm, I'm, you're looking I'm well. Fully, thank you. No, no, no uh, absolutely. It was, it, was, it was an extraordinary time, yeah. I spent six weeks in a, in a psychiatric hospital. And I learned a huge amount in doing that. Um, I mean, I've campaigned on mental illness before. Uh, but it's something that I really want to do much more of now because it, 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 it's a hidden you're, thing. You also used to campaign against cocaine. And there you were sticking it up your nose in that um, I did. sting. I did campaign against cocaine and I will also continue to campaign against cocaine. I made a big mistake in doing that. I was led to make a big mistake in doing that. And that's something that anybody could fall into. That doesn't make the campaigning wrong. The campaigning, mm -hmm. you know, if, if anything, it makes the campaigning more important because it shows that th this can happen to people. Two, two things here. I mean, the fact that, you know, it, it's the mother of all parliaments, this amazing democracy, can treat someone so badly, it, it drives them. You were you're feeling suicidal at one point. Yeah, I was. I was on, I was on suicide. They, they were checking on me every 15 minutes and they removed my belt and my shoelaces and there's no sharp objects or glass in the room and all the rest of it. So, um, yeah, I, I was. And then I had NHS visiting me twice a day, the crisis team uh, at, at my flat in, uh, and, um, and I had to have around the around the clock support mm. from friends. Which is, which is horrific that, you know, basically your job has, has led to this situation. But as Andrew did allude to, I mean, y y you were stitched up, but to a certain extent you stitched yourself up by putting yourself in that position. One no fool like, would, you be, would you admit to no fool like an old fool, David? Yeah, there certainly isn't, yeah, and I am an old fool. I've been an old fool, so no, no question about that. I, I fell into it. It happened to me. I think... It's possible that it can happen to anyone there. And I think people are vulnerable to, to this. And, and people are vulnerable in Parliament as well. And should this happen to them, at least you expect a proper process looking into mm. it and discovering the thing. truth yeah. of the matter. And that's what's shocked me. Dave, we've only got time for one more question. Um, you, you've had 10 years, 12 years, 13 years in the House. What are you going to do next? Have you got a job lined up? 
Um, what, are you looking at? what are you looking at? I'm looking at all sorts of things. Um, I'm hoping to go back to business, back to music, my true love. And um, but in the meantime, yeah, I'm applying to do... I could be an Amazon delivery driver. It's true, don't laugh. Really? Would mm. you do that job? Yeah, I'd do anything, yeah. I've done many. I've been a cleaner, I've been a van driver, you name it, I've done jobs. And, I, yeah, I'm not ashamed to do anything at all. Music, are you a singer? No. Oh, you don't want to hear me sing, no. Well, I was going to ask him no, if he was a singer. <laughs> you could feel it coming, Play guitar? I can play the guitar, yeah, very bad. Well, David, thank you for coming in and being so frank yeah. and the very best of luck. Yeah. And um, has Rishi Sunak sent you a thank you for all your support uh, card? Not, not yet, not yet. It's probably it may post. come. I was going to say, that the, the, a few more scandals possibly to break. What advice quickly would you give to people involved in your situation? Um, I would say speak out. I would say don't keep quiet. Take no notice of the, of yeah. the, of the confidentiality. Nobody else I does, think, and there's no right. penalty to them. What could yeah. they have done to you? Mm, exactly. Well, yeah. Nothing worse than you did to yourself, actually. Yeah. yeah. That's David Warburton, uh, former MP for Somerton and Froome.